Hi, my name is Nick Von Komar, and I'll be doing my current event presentation on a, a rocket attack that happened within Iraq, and it killed two U.S. service members. So I found this article at the BBC, and the title goes, Iraq Base Attack, Coalition and Iraqi Troops Hurt as Tihi Targeted Again. So a little background on this event. On March 11th, U.S. and coalition forces came under rocket attack at Camp Tihi, which is about nine miles north of Baghdad in Iraq. Um, Camp Tihi is used as a training ground to train Iraqi soldiers to fight ISIS. And March 11th happens to also be the birthday of General Soleimani, the, the Quds Force uh, General who the United States took out uh, in the beginning of the year. During this attack, two U.S. troops were killed, as, long as, as well as one British soldier. 33 rockets hit the base uh, in total. This event's not well known as the world's been primarily focusing on the coronavirus. Um, however, the U.S. did respond, and in total, they struck multiple depots and headquarters for the popular mobiliz mobilization forces, which the United States claimed to be behind the attack. U.S. officials also said that uh, Khatib Hezbollah was the responsible for these attacks, and uh, this just happens to be the long history of attacks on U.S. forces by these popular mobiliz mobilization forces. The first one being the United States uh, contractor being killed around December and December of 2019, followed by the United States strike on General Soleimani, as well as another popular mobiliz mobilization force commander outside of ba Baghdad in, uh, in January, and now this attack. A little background into this, uh, in the popular mobiliz mobilization forces. They were formed uh, to fight ISIS in 2014, as ISIS was... Uh, I guess, controlling and gaining large uh, territory within Iraq. And uh, a weak, I guess, central Iraqi government didn't do much uh, in terms of throwing men and equipment there. So people actually formed their own militias. And these militias fall with under the umbrella of the Iraqi security forces. One of the largest ones in, uh, I guess, this militia is the Khatib Hezbollah, who was responsible for these attacks. They are. They do have Iranian support, and they do. Uh, they do use Iranian weapons um, as well as training. So these popular mobilization forces are mainly Shia, uh, which would explain why they were created to fight ISIS. ISIS is a primarily Sunni extremist group. So you see these these Shia militias coming together to fight. Uh, I guess the these Sunni extremists. And these uh, popular mobilization forces also have seats within the Iraqi parliament, making them very powerful. Um, and these groups primarily, I guess, are located in the southern part of Iraq, um, and that where that area is predominantly Shiite. Um, however, Iraq is kind of turning on this, on turning on these groups. In October of 2019, large protesters have demanded that. Uh, that demanded the end of Iranian influence within the region. Uh, this would include not only the groups and the funding of, of Iran, but also, I guess, Iranian funding for politicians at the local, um, I guess, province level as well as the national level. Iran has had a long history of, uh, of I guess, funding these groups as well. The reason Iran wants to, I guess, fund these groups is one, they want to export the revolution. This has been a main goal of Iran since since the revolution in 1979. And it just doesn't stop at Iraq. They want to, I guess, export the revolution to the rest of the Middle East. Um, I guess another big main reason, though, is the Iran-Iraq war. When Iraq attacked Iran, um, Iran suffered immense casualties, not only to their military, but also their, uh, their civilian forces. Um, and by, by, I guess, influence, Iraq, Iran doesn't want to have another, I guess, war happen where they were at the brink of destruction. Um, so not only is Iraq uh, an arch rival, but they also want to, I guess, prevent this another war between the two countries as it would be costly and not only human lives, but military as well. Iraq, all, Iran, excuse me, Iran also uh, feels threatened by coalition presence within Iraq. And um, they've called repeatedly for Iraq to, I guess, expel coalition forces and primarily the U.S. 
This has been an increase, so I guess there's been an increase of this calling as the United States and other Western countries uh, starting in 2018 have have imposed stricter economic sanctions on Iran, which have really hurt the uh, the regime 